Okay, hello and welcome to another episode of Hiring and Inspiring. Today's guest is Caroline Pierre, who is an old friend of mine. We connected and met in Sydney. Back when I was living there, she is, well, her profession, she's worked in the fitness industry for a number of years. Uh, like I said, she's an old friend. She has a really sort of great outlook on life um, and her sort of attitude to everything, um, which I've always really admired. So I'm looking forward to catching up with her. It's been a while since we, we caught up. So I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing what she's been up to, learning a little bit more about her and in some maybe ways I, I didn't always, always maybe knew um, and just having a bit of a chat with her. So Caroline, with that introduction, bonjour. And Bonjour. welcome to the show. How are you? How are you? I'm good, and you? Yeah, going well, going well. <laughs> so it's been, I think it's been maybe probably about a couple of years since mm. we maybe caught the spoke or caught up. What's been happening? What's been happening in your life? I think I, I've seen a little bit on your Instagram. You've been traveling around yeah. all kinds of regional parts of Australia. You've been all over the place. Tell me what's been going on. Yeah. Uh, a lot have been happening. So when you met me, I uh, was in Sydney for like four years. I was studying. I'm French. And I'm, um, yeah, studying a lot. And with COVID, when COVID happened, um, a lot of opportunity opened with visa. So instead of being stuck in Sydney, I've been able to go on a different visa and go travel. So I bought my first car in 2021, end of 2021. And in our first yeah. trip, I left Sydney to go down um, to the South Coast of New South Wales, all the Victorian coast, uh, up to South Australia. I was meant to go WA, but the border was still okay. closed because of COVID. So I sticked around, SA, worked for a little bit, then crossed to Queensland, worked a bit in okay. Queensland. In between, I got back to Sydney, you know, at one point, need a bit of money. Um, working here again, and then last year, I cross back to Adelaide. So I stayed in SA for about yep. eight months. It was really nice. I loved it. Mm. And uh, yeah, SA until uh, March this year, so like two months ago, I uh, made myself back slowly to Sydney and went to travel to Tasmania as well. So Amazing. WA is still a plan. It's just not happening yet. <laughs> it's a lot of organization uh. on the car and yeah. So we'll see how that goes. So you've sort of been traveling slash working. Yeah. How's it all been going? Like you've been balancing that? Yeah. So with the fitness industry, I'm lucky. Can I name a brand for a gym I'm working for or no? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm working for F45 yeah, course, yeah. and I, that's a yeah. super good thing about it. I don't, I don't need any training anymore. It's all the same trainings everywhere. So I just arrive in a state or in a new city, basically knock at the door or send send an email being like, hey, I've got experience. I'd love to work for you. And uh, I'm, I'm able to work a bit everywhere like that. And I also do hospitality. Yeah. I still keep a bit of hospo on the side okay. because it gives you extra hours. And uh, same, everyone hires you. I've done hospo since I'm 18. So, yeah. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> so you've obviously been on the road a little bit the last few years. Like, How have you found that? Like, how have you found it's... that experience? I found myself. <laughs> I, really? I left. Okay. Yeah, I left because I'm not a city person. I'm from a little town in France in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, you know, when you're young, you dream about the big city. And I was in Sydney for four yeah. years and realized I had some unhealthy pattern in my life, a uh, coping mechanism and just anxiety, a lot of anxiety. So I took okay. my one, one, one quick trip one day and realized how grounded I am in nature. So that's why I've done this whole thing. And it's just, it's incredible. Like we, as human, we belong in nature. We're still animals. And uh, it's it just, everything just calms down, especially a pace of life, like a city like Melbourne or Sydney are very yeah. full on. To survive in a city is so expensive. You really have to keep going. So I just, yeah, I found myself, it's it's sometimes a challenge because I'm a solo, solo woman traveling. So I've got little safety tips and, you know, a little stress yeah. now and then, but it's so rewarding. I, I, I just can't stop anymore. Like I'm about to leave. I, I think it will be tomorrow, Tuesday to come back to Queensland. So <laughs> <Brilliant>. <laughs> it's, yeah. You, you, you've always sort of struck me as a bit of like that, that sort of free spirit, you know, yeah. you sort of, you know, going with the wind. Um, 
and it's something like I said, I've always admired about you. Like I'm always, I, personally, I'm like, I need to like, right, I'm quite like structured in my routine. I need to like know what I'm doing. Mm. I need to know where, you know, what I'm doing for work or whatever. Otherwise I just like freak out or like, and I know a lot of people are the same. You've, you're always like, you know, I'm just going to go with it and see yeah. what happens and not, not really stress too much about it. Like, is that something that you've always had? Like, have you always been that sort of free spirit? Would you yeah. say? Yes. When, um, when I turned 18, I went to, I went to London, just, I left like mm -hmm. if I was going um like for a week I said bye mom bye dad I actually freaked out but when I arrived there and then I just I don't know I just loved I love that excitement about having something new every day I quickly get bored of places like I I never stay very long even if it's just about most of the time like a job or mm. a place a house or a share house I quickly get bored and I need to move and need that excitement and uh, yeah I love living with with the flow it's it's a lot of detachment from the outcome where you kind of like, you know, when you expect something to go one way, but it doesn't always go this way. That's what happened to me last week. Yeah. My, I was meant to leave <laughs> last week. And as I'm literally getting out of Sydney, I'm just before the motorway, my car broke down. And I'm super grateful it happened in Sydney because I've been able to work a bit longer, get the car fixed. And, you know, I would have been stuck in the middle of nowhere. But, well, you, you just change your plan. You just stay there for a little bit. It's a bit frustrating sometimes, but then, yeah, you just go. And I, mm. I do love that free spirit. I'm struggling to settle. Yeah. I'm the other way around. Like, I, I'd love to settle. Part of me wants to because I want to build a home and having some safety. Yeah. But I just got itchy feet. And, uh, yeah, but I still have a routine. I still need, even if I travel, I still have, you know, my little routine. My car is my home, my bed. Like, when I don't have my car, Africa, it's it's my baby. Yeah. And uh, it's my routine. That's the only thing that will stay with me. And the rest, like every day, I've got a different scenery. So what's, what's the routine? Then? What's the th one or the things that you, or wherever you are, you'll always Yeah, do? it's a very simple thing. Like you wake up in the morning, you're going to get your little camper mate, your little stove, get the coffee going, yeah. my, you know, muesli with my milk. I'm just chill for a bit, depending on obviously if I'm working. But if I'm not working when I'm proper traveling, and then, you know, step by step, you make the bed, you make the car look like a car again because it kind of goes, things are on the bed. It's a Pajero. So during the day when I'm driving, everything's on the, on the bed. And at night, yep. the opposite, everything comes back on the seat. So then you reorganize everything. You check where you're going, what would be the next campground or what would be the next hike or adventure if I've got Wi-Fi, if I've got reception. And then just, yeah, yeah. it's those little very simple things that, keeps you still grounded um, yeah yeah we need nice. routine as human yeah nice so just going back to what you said earlier about you know you finding yourself a little bit mm -hmm. you, one of the one of the things you said you know you really enjoyed being out in nature and out in the outdoors most of the time compared to say living in a big city like w what else did you maybe find out about yourself or what else or, or even that you know getting outside in nature wh where did that sort of come from at what point on the, the, the sort of trip did you learn that so i actually just before um right in the middle of covid when was that yeah beginning of 2021 i quickly booked a car uh, a van to go to cairns and um and i've met like-minded people and um mm. and yeah and i remember meeting a couple that was so grounded. They had, uh, they were living on the road with uh, their two kids, and you know, it's a little thing. We're like, it's doable, it's doable. And and then I just realized suddenly that that whole that whole anxiety crowd, like those overthinking that happens all the time in the city, they just sort of need to stop, and it gets quiet. And yeah. this is when you're able to sit and observe and being present in the moment. As that's what's behind meditation, but. Not great to sticking with it. And, uh, mm. But what also really got me started into that is when I studied yoga. Um, I've never okay. done yoga before. So when I just met you, I think, uh, yeah, I was starting to do yoga. I remember that. We had a few yoga sessions together. You gave me a free free yoga class. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> uh, and um, it was such an open mind because I was expecting something as a, you know, as a personal trainer. I was, oh, yeah, I'll study yoga because first, give me a visa. And second, it will yeah. open my, my, my knowledge about as a trainer, you need mobility. And it was actually so much more than that it was a very holistic approach it was really 
really deep into the philosophy of yoga and the roots in Hinduism. And um, and I was already a little bit in personal development, but that just opened my mind to all those things. And yeah, yeah. and nature really allowed me to to do all those practices, to do like like mindfulness and being present in yoga and meditation and everything else. Yeah. Mm. So that like that yoga that you've picked up in the last few years has been, I guess, part of your whole sort of journey with fitness, right? So yes. you've, your background is in the fitness industry. You've worked as a personal trainer for for a long time. I know. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like, but but you know, a few years back, you were more into like the the weightlifting side of things <laughs> and the gym. You've now progressed to the, to the yoga. I think. Like, how, how would you describe your sort of without better like term your fitness journey it's no, it's exactly what you said so that's um <laughs> my, my my brain i've <laughs> i'm a bit neurodivergent and my brain works in a specific yeah. way where i do is basically adhd i go one hyper focus at the time so okay yeah. i was i've been in I, i'm still in fitness like i still love anything that moved the body but yeah something fell anyway uh yeah when um i I was really into lifting heavy and everything, but it didn't always feel right with me. Like I, I love the fact that, you know, you build, you build muscles and full body mm. awareness and full body control, but it's, it's, there's not much mindfulness behind it. So when I started yoga, yes, this is where you, you realize you don't actually need to lift heavy pieces of metal to, you know, have a strong body yeah. and have a full control. And, um, and so now I'm more and more trying to find myself, find my way into some something a bit more flowy, like there's animal flows and any type of mobility and then put them okay. together. So resistance training is still very important to build that strength. But I, I really love, I would actually love to find one day my proper way in my own business and opening okay. potentially my own gym of something very flowy and, uh, still very much resistance and mobility base but yeah i'm a bit so when you started in the gym when you were you know back lifting weights what why were you doing that where, where did that sort of how um, did that start kicking off? i started when i was 18 first breakup classic yeah <laughs> in a gym we're all here for a reason and uh we all have our backstory you know you want to build like yeah. to, to be a hundred percent honest i I was a shy, I was a shy kid and uh, it was hard for me young, being younger to be out there. I had, I've been bullied and everything. I'm really open. There's no problem about that. And so when I found the gym, when I was 18, I started putting on muscles. You're like, oh, people don't mess with me anymore. Mm. You know, like I look strong. I feel okay, strong. Yeah. It's, you, yeah. you build, I build an armor, but I still, mm. I kept going with it, which now I'm really aware of it. And I don't, I'm not in the same mindset that I used to be before. It was like being big, being big and you know um mm. now i found that balance exactly with yoga and having more mobility and more body control over just mass and uh and mm. heavy yeah would you say like your fitness journey because this is how i've developed mine over the years like you start when you're in the gym like you're almost so you're saying you know you try to put on the muscles you know you try to do that to you know, intimidate other people or impress yeah. other people, right? <laughs> to look good for other people, right? So that's like when I first started lifting weights in the gym, it it was for like, you know, I want to look good for like, you know, impress girls or like, <laughs> you know, show off the guys. Like it was for other people. Yep. And then over the years, like I actually just stopped really caring about that. And it was more like I just started training for myself, like how yeah. to make, you know, I, I want to train to make myself feel good. Is that how you've, yes. it sounds like maybe you, you've, yours like mindsets progressed? Exactly. It? It's all like now it's how it feels good for me. Exactly. As I said, when, uh, when I was lifting heavy and it was just, there was no mindfulness behind it. It was just like, I lift mm. because I want to lift, you know, I'm a lift. Now it's, I do what I like. I do, I do what feels good for me. And, um, it, it, it's exactly this it's, and it's obviously for the mental health and, uh, mm. and it's for me, I am very into I want to have full body. I want full body control and being able to do any movement I'd like to do in my life. Like, especially when we grow older, mobility very, you know, get 
worse and worse and my parents yeah. especially my mom has arthritis and so I've seen her over the years getting with like small stiff and so yeah now it's it's all about mm. me and it's that's exactly the same with being in nature finding myself and not mm. being apologetic about it anymore and putting myself first instead of doing mm. it for the other or in a protective way mm. but as far in the gym we all there for a reason we all have our little demon mm. And uh, on the shoulders, and but yeah, it is coming back yeah. inward and coming back to ourselves. Yeah. So, so with the like the yoga and the mobility stuff, like I've I've seen you in action do that, and like you're pulling out some outrageous poses that, like you know, I'm just like, like there's no way I can do that. Or you know, someone imagine someone obviously isn't going to do that, but you know, say someone wanted to start and improve their mobility and their, or their flexibility, or whatever. How would they go about it? Like, what would you recommend? Like for for me, say like I. I do a bit of stretching like at the end of the day just but more for like recovery yeah. I'm seeing small improvements but like I wouldn't say I'm an expert what how would you say someone who wants to improve their ability how they do it like exactly like resistance training you have to put the time and the effort into it it's not going to yeah. happen with as you said little improvement if you do it at the end of the day for recovery you realize I don't know your hammies your hamstrings are a bit a bit better but you have to put mm. time and attention there's two different types of stretches as well. There's static and dynamic and I'm uh, playing with it. Maybe at least once once a once a week, really having a session of just that. Just a session of, of playing with the movement, playing with the join and in you especially when you start realizing that's a big thing about yoga where we basically say to breathe into it and to release the muscles. It's consciously you really have to tune inside. And to realize that, oh, okay, if I really take a deep, nice breath in, in that seated forward fold, I might slowly realize like my, my head gets closer to my knees. Mm. And uh, just like everything else, yeah, put time into it and uh, and then yeah. not forcing anything. Um, I've hurt myself like that before because I'm a bit hypo. And uh, mm. you, you kind of want to go deep in a stretch and then you bounce and then that, you do that little tear the muscle yeah, and all. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty, it get like everything else, like lifting. If you rush and you don't engage yeah. your core, but you switch, you know, your back. And, uh, but yeah, taking time slowly into it, but starting it with recovery yeah. at the end is already a good start. It's not many person, especially not many men doing it. It's all about like the pump, yeah. but then you can't move. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like stretchings for girls kind of thing, like that whole mentality. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It kind of sucks, really. But it's, yeah. it, it, it's changing. Um, what about, it's changing. Um, it's changing. It's good is to it? see. Okay. Yeah. Slowly. Mm. <laughs> what, what, what about, you know, professionally, like your like work, you know, you're, you're doing F45 training. I think you were looking at doing some like yoga training and coaching as well. Like how's that progressed? What's the what's um, sort of... So the thing is, um, when I met you, I was still finishing my diploma in yoga teaching. And the idea yeah. was to get slowly into it, to maybe like found a yoga studio. But because just as I finished my yoga qualification, which was June 2021, Sydney going to that three months lockdown. So mm. it did not happen, obviously, because everything closed mm. down. And, uh, and this is when I just left in November for my trip. So actually... Yeah, okay never really went into straight away yoga teaching but i need to push myself because i am not okay. always the most confident person and i just need to you know to go for it give me a little kick and be like okay let's go just just do it but yeah. i still do it with f45 i'm not every sunday because it depends where i work and how i work but like yeah. yesterday i just did on saturday just did a yoga session so it's great it gives me more confidence to see that i'm good at it not bad at it <laughs> it's all about that mm. that little voice in your head this is what i mean when yeah. they're like going in a bush and heal this is what i'm working on of knowing yeah. my worth and then i'll be able to do it um but yeah same because of covid i had to slowly like not give up but i couldn't work full-time in gyms anymore because my visa covid visa one of the condition was to work in the critical sectors and uh, the fitness industry is not was not a critical sector, so I had to come back in something right. like you know agriculture, nursing, tr um, tourism, hospitality. So that's why I went back to hospitality, but I could still do a bit of gym. But my main job was meant to be critical. So mm. that's that's why everything kind of slowed down a bit, and now I'm mm. going back more into it, and I'm really enjoying myself. <laughs> 
And you're still enjoying the F45 training? I do. I do. It's um, yeah. that this is exactly a bit of a issue for me at the moment because I was just meant to be in Sydney for two weeks, time to do mm. some work on the car. Contacted the manager of the studio I used to work, and uh, she was like, "Yeah, I'm happy to have you back." But then, as I said, car broke down, so I stayed a bit longer, and I'm actually absolutely enjoying it. It's it's a great yeah. community. It's a great. It's a lot of fun. I'm having so much fun. I'm just bouncing, dancing around, being my weird self, and yeah. which I used to think was very awkward, but people love it. It's good energy, and that raises yeah. everyone else, and and it feels good to know you're good at something. And uh, yeah. so I'm a bit right. between Definitely. like you know want to stay, keep working with them, or yeah, yeah hit the yeah. road. <laughs> just on that personality, right? Or, or yourself, you know, you talk about. And I've seen you in action, like that high energy, you know, loud, like, you know, when you're leading those classes, like that's, you know, it kind of looks like that's you and your element. And I feel yeah. like, you know, people might think that's you, you like that all the time, but I, I know you yeah. and I know you're not always <laughs> like that. You're, you're a little bit introverted at times. Yeah. You like your own company. Yeah. Like, is that true? Is that fair, by the way? Like, is that true? It is. Like, it is a hundred percent true. I'm like a weird intro extrovert when, uh, when the people at work, when I tell them that I'm actually an introvert, no one believes me because I, I, I give so much. I give like a hundred percent of myself at work when I coach and it's not, not fake at all. It's just being me. And, uh, but that's mm. the thing is that once that is done, I need me quiet time recharging because my social batteries are out. So you yeah. will rarely see me clubbing or Mm. in loud environment so that's the funny thing is that i can f45 is, is very loud coaching is loud between my own voice and the music yeah yeah but once that is it i'm like oh i'm very sensitive to noises and uh it has to be very quiet and it, yeah you described it very well this is exactly this <laughs> and as i get older it's more and more i just so enjoy my me time and... that was yeah that, that was my next question like that social battery like everyone has one right bigger or smaller like i don't know we're similar ages like i i found mine is getting like smaller yeah. and smaller like if oh, i'm yeah. out for like a few hours like i was out for like a few hours last night having, having a few beers and like oh, maybe up for three hours I was like right that's enough yeah. <laughs> like i just wanted to go home like i don't know but then you know when i was younger like that social battery seemed like it was never ending yeah. is that something that you found that you just got shorter uh, as you get same, older yeah a hundred percent same I, I was just having a conversation with my best friend yesterday she's a bit the same it's yeah. so i can't tell if it's our age just turned 30 or or if it's actually you know covid i got a feeling covid the whole world pandemic thing affected it because we all went home mm. And uh, it was great. I loved it. <laughs> I loved being yeah. home and not having to go out and just, you know, chill at home with a glass of wine. What else, you know? And I'm, mm. I'm really wondering if it's not like a, a world thing now of all of us. But, but yeah, point. no, yeah. social battery, same. Exactly. I used to go, I used to go clubbing all night every single weekend when I was between 18 and I don't know, 22. <laughs> And uh, I still enjoy now and then to go, you know, to a pub and have a few beer like you might have done mm. yesterday. But I need mental preparation for it. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay, it's going to happen. Um, yeah. If at one point I feel drained, I'm just going to go home. The same, I don't, I don't yeah. drink anymore because I don't want to reach that point where I'm like, nah, I just want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> just want to recharge and being like quiet under my blanket you know <laughs> yeah. no I, I do feel you at times you, you mentioned about you know you turned 30 right um well you've recently turned 30 i know it was a few months yeah. ago um, a month ago one month <laughs> oh, okay oh, sorry sorry one month ago um it's something that's on my mind as well because I, I turned 30 in a few months how do you sort of feel about turning 30 like how you know how do you feel about I don't know, the next decade, your thirties in general. Um, it was interesting. I was not scared about it at all because mentally I was already there. I'm, I'm an old soul. Like yeah. I am, I'm, I, yeah. as I just said, I like to be alone. I like to be on my own. I, I really enjoy just, I don't know, having like a cook cooking on my own and doing those things. And um, all my friends are also older. I've been surrounded. I, I just got big brothers, like everyone always been older than me most of the time. And uh, so I was already mentally there. And uh, I'm actually, I, I was excited because 
I think 30s is the new 20s. You know yourself so much better in that in your 20s. Like, okay, we're known as, you know, we can't go out as much and things mm-hmm. like that, but we enjoy something else. And uh, and as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm knowing myself so much better and it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be nice. And mm-hmm. I know as a woman, they tend to put, you know, a thing of like, once you pass 30, you kind of obsolete. Oh, uh, no, nah, this is not going to happen. I'm not going to let society push that on me. It's not happening. Yeah. And uh, no, nah, it's just going to be fun because I finally know what I want and what I like. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like your yeah. your twenties, you're, you're still you're figuring stuff out. Like you can't, oh, yeah. you don't really. You figure you're trying to like f- learn who you are. Yeah. And then by the time you turn thirty, hopefully you kind of know yeah. what kind what of. you like. And you, <laughs> that is better. You don't. Well, you know, you mentioned what you you know you kind of want to go for what you want. Like what what do you want? Like what do you think <laughs> the next? I know this is a tough question to ask, <laughs> but I'll answer. It, right? What does the future? What does the future hold for you? Like what do you that, think your thirties has? That still? is a thing of mine. This is one of my issue where I can't project myself in the future. As I said, I just mm. you know go with the flow. But it also these pros is good. You know, just like yeah, take let's live life. Let life take me wherever it wants. But at the same time, like I still don't know if I want to stay in Australia. I absolutely love Australia. And um, mm. I, I've been here for six years and I'm still on temporary visa. I'm not resident. And uh, mm. because I'm, I'm I'm petrified of taking a commitment, <laughs> mm. which that's that's why. Like there's, there's still things to learn. And uh, I know that I'd like a bit more stability. Like, yes, still traveling, but potentially having a business, a business that will allow me to travel or um i I am unsure i am unsure like would it be based in france and then something allow me to travel around the world and often come back to australia or or base myself in australia work myself like towards residency especially now that i left sydney it's easier it's Mm. easier to get through sponsorship and all those things they need people especially i think at the moment is it's an open door uh, australia need yeah. people and it would be a good good time to jump on and try to get sponsored but yeah it's a bit this is the story of my life i'm very indecisive <laughs> i can't take decisions it's horrible <laughs> so obviously like doesn't sound like you've got like a five-year plan no. like a 10-year plan no. which obviously most people don't like yeah. you obviously you got you kind of thinking like how far ahead do you think are you like right i'm just thinking because i'm i'm maybe like i try and maybe plan the next year that's what i maybe think about like how, how far ahead do you think I, I would say like six months max yeah max really max like right now i'm about to live for queensland and as i said i really enjoy what i'm doing in sydney so i'm kind of like okay i give myself one month i go to queensland if i didn't found a job that I really love and I would like to actually find different something different this time try to work in nature because I love nature okay. it's a bit it's a bit of a tough thing to start because most of the time is volunteering so I'd love to maybe yep come back find a job I still stay around cities so like Gold Coast Sunshine Coast maybe yeah F45 maybe hospitality mm. and volunteer on the side and yeah so if within a month I'm not you know really enjoying the work I'm doing and or maybe financially struggling because it is a thing then I might Mm. yeah come back in Sydney and then work um until the end of my current visa and same at the moment um, I'm waiting for end of June because it will be a big change in all visas so I cannot plan anything until the end of June and we'll see how that goes from there yeah gotcha something else I'm keen to ask you about um we're like we're we're, sim- we're quite similar in terms of like we're the same age we've yep. both been in australia for six years both expats from europe um h- how do you because it's something i'm always thinking about like I, h- how do you sort of think about your old life so without you know, <laughs> using a better term your old life you know in, in france like like how do you sort of what what, what do you feel about your, your kind of that time the fact that yeah. you maybe at 24 years old moved to the other side of the world and suddenly for me it was like oh, I moved and then suddenly I just didn't see anyone from my old life mm-hmm. and I just you know I was completely starting again and I've now got this new life which you know people from my old life don't really know about or understand at times how do you what are, what are your thoughts on that exactly the same exactly the same um 
Yeah, it's it, it's very. I, I had a realization one day. I met a Swiss girl um, while I was traveling in Queensland. This is what I love about travel. You meet amazing people, and yeah. um, she's French Swiss. And she was telling me she realized she ran away from Switzerland. She ran away from her problem mm-hmm. of like growing up as a teenager. And it made me think, and I'm like, whoa, I think I've done the same. And what, I really, what am I running from? Can I? Yeah, exactly, exactly. What am I running yeah. from? And I was, I was even like cutting because at least you have to have the same language. For me, it was obviously two different languages. And I yep. realized that I think in English, I write in English, I read in English, I dream in English. Um, and then just once in a while, I will, you know, call family and text friends and it will be all Australia. And so I, I'm doing, I'm working on that of being like, okay, it's still my roots, it's still who I am. And I'm, I'm, I'm French, I'm still not a resident mm-hmm. or anything. And I will always be. But yeah, mm-hmm. it really, it made a huge cut. And exactly as you said, my friends in France and my friends here, they don't really know about each other. They don't really know what's happening. I post a lot on Instagram for that reason to like having everyone, my family as well, to see uh, what's happening. But yeah, and it's, I was such a different person, such a different person. I was working in a, in a fast food for four years. I was a manager of a subway in my hometown where, you know, it's, it's, I love my little time. It can be quite toxic. Everyone knows each other. And this is also why I left. This is what I also ran away from. And um, it's, it, it is very interesting. I, I love going home. Every time I go home, I'm like, ooh, I should stay. I shouldn't come back to Australia. And then I come back to Australia and I'm like, oh, my God, I love it. And then I don't want to come back home. <laughs> it's tough. But it is exactly as you said. It's just it's really like two different lives. Yeah. So what what's changed? What how have you changed? Say the, the person you are now compared to six years ago when you left France. Um, yeah, the, the I finally accepted myself. You know, as you saw me like being hypo and dancing and coaching and being mm. like all bubbly. I I never yeah. realized I was like that in France. I was not because I was, I don't know. I was just trying to survive um, the world. Literally, it was especially yeah. everyone knew me. As I said, I grew, you know. I was I was bullied at school and that, that sticks with you in a little town. People know you're like, oh, you're the girl that was bullied at school. So it was just about like survive, you know, keep your head down, don't bother anyone, and just go through it. And uh, now I'm only finally getting into like, no, this is my life, and I do what I want, and like I like who I am, I love who I am, I love what I'm doing. Mm. Yeah. Do you, do you struggle with like this is something I find like obviously when you go to maybe catch up with someone from the past you know back in your life your previous life in France they still maybe think of you as that person that um you know they knew from uh, and then you you, you've changed right yes and no at first yes it 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 happened just with my family just with my mom Mm -hmm. and my when I left for my first trip two years ago uh it was in COVID Mm -hmm. I haven't seen them for two and a half years because of COVID and I had a few people I met a few you know very open-minded, grounded people, hippie, if you want to say it. Okay, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, they would be like, you're going to see, you're going to come home and it's going to be tough because everyone is expecting that person they knew before. And so it's going to mm. be, it's going to be challenging. And it's exactly what happened. It, it, it got a bit complicated with my mom because suddenly like, why, what do you want to do? What, what do you mean you do the work? What did I do wrong? <laughs> and I'm like, you didn't do anything yeah. wrong, mom. You did your best. You did absolutely did your best. But this is my journey. And that triggers people. That triggers some people. But most of the time, I, I never had too many friends. I've got good friends. So they understand it. They understand it. Yeah. They, they, see, yeah. they see the evolution and they see it for a good thing. So, yeah. It's, it goes both ways as well sometimes like you kind of go back and you kind of think you know <laughs> nothing has changed just been doing this, they've been doing the same obviously sometimes you kind of think nothing's changed but like obviously you can't expect them to just be have stayed still doing what they've been doing hmm. for the last six years and like no of course not like they've been making different friends they've been yeah. going out and doing hmm. stuff and their lives have changed as well so yeah it's just i don't know just part of this but it's just it, a, a weird thing sometimes, isn't it? This expat life. <laughs> it, it is. It still is because there is some stuff that don't change. So, I, like as I said, me for a little town, you, you just see those people. They're still in the relationship they were. That you know, perfect. Mm. No, you know, no, no judgment or anything. It's still in a relationship, but then now they're getting married and then they're getting a baby, and then I'm the one who's just like da 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 da, <laughs> going around <laughs> and 
when are you yeah, when yeah. are you coming back when are you settling i don't know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, i'm going to tasmania for a few weeks like <laughs> yeah what a life so um no no i love it um so look i've got maybe one final question to hit you with um and it's a, a question i tend to wrap these shows up with um I'm really interested to know your answer to this. So the question is around, or the topics around, the idea of success in life, and you Oof. can take this any which way you like, professional, personal, whatever. To uh, to Caroline Pierre, what does I guess success look What's, like? To that's you? a hard one. We're going very philosophical. Um, I don't know. So that's the thing. I'm really trying to get out of it, and I think it's a huge pressure in big city like Sydney and Melbourne of like success will be like buy a house and build a family and get married and and then I I you know I see how stressful that is and same full respect you know but for me like I I'll I'll be more successful if I I find myself and I I'm I don't, I don't really care if I own a house one day at the moment I'm happy um same I don't think I want kids this is still something I'm a bit like and for me the success will just be to find like finding our thing what we want to do not following what society tells you to do and yeah. um yeah it's it, yeah it can be very <laughs> you got me on that question it's 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 just it's something that's interesting because like it is. I, i'm always thinking about it because like the first thing you mentioned you know the first thing you went to was a house and kids right mm. but that's but that, why is that like the the go-to of what success looks because like. Because society tells you to, because mm -hmm. because everyone else, and I understand, I understand if you, if you like, you were born or grew up in a city, in city like Melbourne or Sydney, it's, it's hardcore. Like when you see, especially now, the prices of housing, like all my friends are really struggling. It's all, everyone has the same battle of having that income to then having that mortgage and then pay off that mortgage. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm, um, I wanted it. I still a part of me want to, you know, you want to have a place you call home mm. and build something, potentially a family or, you know, even if it's like myself and three cats, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's, I, it's just like it, it, yeah. So it, it can be very stressful. So everyone will have the mm. idea of success. And I know that I would like to find success in a, in my career to be able to build my thing. Like I love working f for companies and everything, but yeah. it would be such, you know, an, uh, an achievement of being like, yeah, I've put my skills together because my work is about skills and helping mm. people and being able to do this and, you know, having people that are willing to pay you for it and then building your own mm. thing or that would be for me a pretty good success. And being able to heal because we all mm. have our traumas. We all went to different journey and some are more aware than others. And we, it's not, we're never going to be perfect. No one is. I'm never going to be like, Oh, that's it. No trauma. No, nah. it's just step by step overcoming, like recognizing a pattern and then being able to, you know, look at it and maybe heal it and then move through it. And for me, that will mm. be success. Yeah. Love it. What an answer. Great stuff. <laughs> Carol and Pierre, thank you very much for um, well, for that answers and everything Thanks, you shared with me today and uh, the conversation. Really enjoyed that. Um, appreciate you as a friend. Appreciate everything you're doing. Um, and yeah, keep, keep it up. Thanks, any, mate. any final thoughts? Any final words? I was really open. <laughs> That's what I can just say. Wow, I, I overshare. I can say that. <laughs> no, it's all yeah. good. It's all good. no, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for inviting me. Uh, if it, it, it's really good, you know, it's I always think I'm doing my own little life. I still have, you know, the idea that I'm that little shy girl, and it's it feels amazing when you got a, a friend that is like, okay, I want to hear your journey. What's happening? It feels amazing. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Great to chat and great to catch up. Yeah, Stay in touch. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. <laughs>